Welcome to another video on data to decisions. And in today's video, we'll be building a chart, which is an alternative to stacked column chart. And these charts are also called as panel charts or trellis or small multiple charts. But I'll give you an example first so that we can understand the context here. So let's use this chart where I have the sales by manufacturer and the style of the vehicle that's being sold. If you start with the first one, Hyundai, there is 47,220 units of cars sold for the manufacturer. But how is that distributed? We have the breakdown by hatchback versus SUV. So this is the scenario where you want to take a column chart, you want to show the total by manufacturer, but you also want to break it down by the style of the vehicle. So you have multiple dimensions, right? Typically, we may use a stacked column chart, the benefit of this chart over the stacked column chart is because when you stack one column over the other, it's a little bit difficult for our brains to process the difference and compare them. Our brains are equipped to understand the differences if the columns are starting from the same baseline. That's why having side-by-side -side columns or these clustered columns are easier to read than the stacked columns. So in this video, We'll be starting with raw data and we'll build these charts step by step. Let's get started. So let's start with the raw data in this structure. So I have the style column and then I have the manufacturers and their sales are here. And I have the total by manufacturer and also total by the style of the vehicle. In my case, I have only two styles, right? But in your case, you may have more. Uh, but I'll explain how we can build it regardless. We're going to build the first chart based on the manufacturer. So I'm going to select everything, including the total by manufacturer. Go to insert, go to 2D column. This creates a column like this. And what I'm going to do now is, let's say, for example, understand what Excel has already built for us first. Excel has built um, the hatchback in the blue series. SUV is the second in orange. And there is a total series, which is the gray. So each row here, has been created as a series. Now, what we are going to do is to keep the total in the primary axis, and we want to move the other two series, so hatchback and SUV, into the secondary axis. In your case, if you have more than two, then you will move all of them. How to do that? Right click, change short type, go to combo. Excel will automatically try to give you a total as a line, but again, change it to keep that as clustered column. So we want all of them to be clustered column, but except the total series, all the other series change them to the secondary axis. Press OK. Now you see a secondary axis up here, and then the total now is in a secondary axis. Total is the only one in the primary, everything else in the secondary. Right click, select data, make sure that the total is at the top of the list. If some, If a series is at the top here, that means it's in the background from a chart visual perspective. So we want the total to be in the background. Great. So we have done the first step now. So now comes the important step of aligning these columns. So if you're able to select the uh, total series, maybe you can, maybe you cannot, depends on how, you know, what values are in your data. But I'll tell you an easy way to always select the correct series would be when you, when you have a chart selected, press Control 1. That will open up the format chart uh, site panel. And here you can go to and choose any specific series. I want the total series. And then I will go to the series options. And I'm going to enter 50%. Okay. Now I'm going to enter 50% now. And I will go to the hatchback series. Any of the series in the secondary axis go there, and I can choose hatchback or SUV. I've chosen hatchback. Now, the gap width here, this is the important part. Because we chose 50% for the total series, and we have two other series like hatchback and SUV. So, two times 50 is 100%. So, I'm going to put 100% here. And if you had three different vehicle styles, you will do three times 50. So whatever your total series gap with this, you multiply that by the number of other series you have. In my case, it's two. So I've multiplied it. Uh, this will basically give you a style which is like the width of the total column 
will be equal to width of all the other columns combined. So it kind of nicely aligns. And um, so now we have this done. So now I'm going to click on the secondary axis right on the chart and press delete. This basically removes the secondary axis and brings all of them to a single axis point. And so now the total value, you can check this, it's 107,535. And you can see that it's above 100,000 in the chart. And so the total is represented correctly. And then the blue series, which is a hatchback, you can see for the Maruti manufacturer, it is 65,151. It is about 60,000. So everything looks fine so far. Now we just need to start formatting the chart. Since we put the total in the background, we can go and click on the fill and give it maybe a little bit lighter color so that it's not like overpowering. So I'm going to do this and I can click on plus and add data labels. This will add the label for the total series. And now I can select one of these other series and change the colors this way. Or I can go here in the series, select hatchback, solid fill. I'm going to give a little bit of, a, again, I don't want the colors to be too bold or dark. So again, that's the design I'm going to go for. But uh, you can choose colors according to the theme that you want to go with. And I can do something like this. I can do this. Uh, again, the, the point is that the colors are selected so that it's clear to the audience what is what. So if it is too close, then make sure that you choose something which can be clearly different, something like that. So now we have the total here, and then we have the orange is the hatchback, the green is the SUV. Um, so everything looks okay from a color point of view for me. So I'm going to click on the legend, move it to the top. And since I don't have like a, a lot of legend entries, I can just move it to the top right. I'm going to change the chart title. Sales by manufacturer and style. And I will give some formatting. And I don't need it to be this big, so I can reduce the size of the font. And now um, I am going to right click on the grid lines, format grid lines, make them less prominent so it does not distract us. Click on the chart itself. Go to the border, so I'm going to apply a little bit gray border, rounded corners. So now we have a chart that looks like this. So we have the total sales. We also have the sales by each of the vehicle style. I would recommend not to add data labels for all of them. Uh, again, unless your numbers are small and you can change the font size a little bit and it's absolutely necessary to show them, then you can. Otherwise, try to make sure that you don't choose a lot of labels and it becomes too cluttered. Um, so with that, we have this chart. Um, as I promised at the beginning, let me build the other, the similar chart, but let's say I want to do it by style. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is like select all of these, but this time I'm going to select the totals by style instead of by the manufacturer. So I'm going to select all these values. I can go and say insert the column. It'll look like this. But now see what happens. Um, Excel still puts the manufacturer in the x-axis. And this is the reason why I wanted to illustrate this. Um, you select this. You can always easily switch in the menu here, switch row and column. Once you do that, now hatchback and SUV are the two. And then you have all these five extra series. So remember that we in this chart on the left, in this chart on the left, we have five manufacturers and two different series. And here we have two web st two styles, and then we have five series of manufacturers. So when we did the gap width here, we made sure that the gap width for the total was 50% and the gap width for the individual series is 100% because it's two times. Here, whatever gap width you give, let's say you give 40% to the total, then you would want to give five times 40, 200% to the individual series. That's how you can build it. So let me just quickly go through and do that. And first thing we're going to do is change short type, go to combo, put everything in the secondary. So except the total, we will move everything to the secondary. And Excel is trying to do a line. And again, I almost missed it. So I'm going to just make sure that it's all clustered column, 
Excel is trying to help us, um, but it's okay in this case. So we've done that. Let's go select data. Make sure that the total one goes to the background. Great. And now we're going to go and do the series. So let's go to the total. We're going to make it, let's say we'll do 40%. And then this one, other series, I can click on it here. By default, it has 219. You can leave it 219 as long as it's a little bit greater, that's okay. But if I move, make it 200, it fits perfectly. And now I can change the colors. For the total series, I'm going to give, again, a little bit of a, a gray. All these colors, I'm, I'm just not going to change it because I think that's pretty obvious how you can change the colors there. But the important thing is I have to remove the secondary axis. Click on the secondary axis and delete. And now everything is in line. And now format grid lines, solid. Choose a color which is not too uh, bold. And then we have the grid lines done. And now we can move the legend to the top. And I can move it to the top right. And I will move the chart title to the left. And I can write the title, sales by item. This time I'll say style and manufacturer. And I can change the formatting of the title and make it not so big. And I'm just going to move this chart to the right. And I can extend this further. I'm not going to add any x-axis title or the y-axis title in both my charts because it's very clear what the x-axis and the y-axis represent because I've given the title in a more clear way. And so I don't, I'm not going to add them. I'm just going to click on the chart and then go to border. I'm going to add this little rounded border. And now we have a chart that looks like that. And then we can add the data labels like before. Click on the totals and then total series and then add data labels and it'll add them to the top. And there we have it. I'm not going to change the formatting of the different colors, as I said. And uh, the point here is you can create these type of charts very easily. Regardless of how your data is structured, we can create these column charts where each column includes another cluster column chart. And so if you have any suggestions to how to make this chart better, or if you have other uh, techniques that you want to share, please do, the, do so in the comment section below. I look forward to learning from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.